We all know the RTX 5090 is a stupidly fast GPU. It might not be that much crazier than the 4090, but it is a very fast GPU. And right here, I'm in Cyberpunk, and it is absolutely pumping frame rate. You can see that we're at like 130 FPS. We're at 4K high settings. Right now, we're also pairing this with the fastest CPU. But games have been using more and more of our CPU. And if your CPU can't keep up with your graphics card, your GPU, then it's only going to be as fast as the weakest link in your system. Now, if you drop your resolution in a game, typically that only affects your GPU. Yeah, we're getting like 200 FPS by dropping to 1440p. Absolutely bonkers. What I want you to pay attention to is a little number up in the upper left corner called GPU busy. And this can let us know how much CPU limited we are in a game. How GPU busy works is it basically calculates how much time it takes your GPU to render a frame versus it takes for your CPU to render a frame. How long does it take it to work? You can see that it's saying our GPU is taking about 4.8 milliseconds to render a frame, but our CPU is taking it like 5.7. That one's not an average number, so it gets a little bit wonky, but, and that means that we're technically, we can be a little bit CPU limited. And what I want you to pay attention to is that little percentage number right below it. If it's taking your CPU longer to render a frame, how much percentage longer does it take? How CPU limited are you? In this game, Stalker 2, oh man, ugh. look at the ghosting. Ugh. Ugh. You guys see the, ugh. besides the point here, there's a lot of ghosting in this game. We're at 4K right now on, I'm pretty sure high settings across the board. And because the 5090 is so fast, and this game uses your CPU so heavily. You can see that we're getting a little bit CPU limited. Usually we're up at two, two, three percent, especially as we come to the city area. Well, not, it's not a city. But yeah, it's getting limited at 4K on this GPU. So how bad does it get on the lower tier ones? <laughs> So let's go ahead and just start throwing in some lower tier CPUs. The first one we're going to do is the 7800X3D, which is still a very, very fast CPU. And then we'll go down to the other X3D CPU, the 5800X3D, even a 5600, 3600, all the way down to an eight year old CPU, a Ryzen 5 1600. It's like, look at the stutters to the freaking stutters. Wow. Holy shit. It's going to be crazy. And now I'm on the 7800X3D. Again, still a beast of a CPU. What happens if we drop it down to 1440p? From what I can tell, yes. High settings, native 1440p. We are CPU limited. Two things to keep in mind is that the GPU utilization up in the far upper left is at like 87, 86, 85% GPU busy number. You can see that we're having a 10% deviation obviously this is still extremely fast the 7800 x3d is a beast of a cpu and it's doing all this right now at only 65 68 watts now based on at 1080p which is going to be the most cpu limited resolution on high settings it's about 10 percent slower than the 9800 x3d so not insane if we turn on ray tracing overdrive ray tracing can use a more cpu but it still isn't getting limited here as the 7800 x3d is only two percent slower than the 9800 x3d i think that's pretty negligible. But let's head over to Marvel Rivals. At least at 4K high settings on the 5090 with the 7800X3D, it's about the same performance as the 9800X3D. I think that's margin of error. And I think the same thing also applies at 1440p. Where despite there being less GPU load, it doesn't seem like the CPU is really holding us back as of yet. These CPUs are pretty close to each other. 1080p is pretty much the same story. Yeah, this one makes me kind of sad we're not feeling the limitations like super super heavy yeah the fastest well one of the fastest cpus available right now can't barely it can barely hit 80 fps in this game the 5090 is at least a little bit cpu limited at 4k like this is a game by game thing too like games are getting extremely cpu limited it's almost feeling like like here your GPU almost doesn't matter as much. Now 4K, both of these CPUs perform about the same. So this doesn't seem like it's the CPU limitation kind of at 4K, but then you drop down to 1440p and the, the cracks in the 7800 XRD start to show a little bit. They can be 12% slower at that resolution. Drop down to 1080p and it's 16% slower than the 9800 X3D. It's where the GPU load decreases and then the CPU has to take up some of that slack, you know. Let's go ahead and go down to the previous generation chip here the 5800X3D. This is still a monster of a CPU. 
Okay, it's the best gaming CPU that you can get on the older AMD platform, AM4. And I actually have it right here. You can probably hear the, the micro chilling right by my side here, and you can probably hear the fans from it, but I don't really have anywhere else to put it. So it kind of is what it is. You know, if it's anything but like one to 2%, then we're probably CPU limited. And that means at 4K, native, no upscaling, no ray tracing, nothing crazy like that. We are getting at CPU limited on the 5090. On this CPU that is still a beast of today, if you want to know in terms of performance, it's pretty similar to Intel's 13th gen CPUs. I won't be testing any Intel CPUs in this video because I think it's easier to see the scaling if we just go through AMD's lineup. At times, just at 4K, we can get CPU limited. And it only gets worse when we go down in resolution. Let's drop to 1440p. The freaking percentage is at like 30%. That means the CPU or the GPU is running 30% faster than the CPU is. The CPU can't keep up with it. And it's shown by this. On the left side is 1080p. That's the CPU limit as we're going to get. And as we go across, you would think that we take a bigger performance hit going up in resolution if we were GPU limited. But as you can see at 1440p, it's only 5% slower. At 4K, it's only 19% slower, which is actually not that crazy for 4K gaming. As we go further with CPUs, it's gonna get more wild. Also for reference at 1080p, it is 33% slower than the 9800X3D. Against the 7800X3D is 26% slower. The CPU limits continue in Marvel Rivals on the 5800X3D. On the left side, 1080p is pretty much exactly the same as 1440p, which means we're fully CPU limited at 1080p, we're fully CPU limited at 1440p. At 4K, we do lose a little bit of performance, which means the GPU is taking over a bit more. That means it's 31% slower in the 9800X 3D at 1080p. Damn. Which means at 1440p, the 9800X 3D is allowing the 5090 to run at full capacity, whereas the 5800X 3D can't provide that same thing. In Stalker 2 now, you see we're at 4K, clearly. And then the graphics settings are at high. Yeah, we could technically go to Epic, but who, who actually plays the Epic? Let's be real. This shit is trifling. Trifling. Maybe disgusting. You can see at 4K native. <laughs> the GPU busy is at like 12, 18, 17%. Then we walk even further into the city area or the town thing. Holy shit, bro. This CPU. This high-end CPU, this is still a high-end gaming CPU today. Barely get 60 FPS. It's really bouncing down into the 50s sometimes. I, I was playing this game on a 7800X 3D, which is a good chunk faster than this guy. How does anyone really play this? This is, this is, this is bad. And this applies to every resolution, man. <laughs> oh my God, it's tough. 1440p, it's the same as 1080p, except the 1% lows are a little bit higher. Same thing with 4K, the 1% lows are a little bit higher. I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, but that's what we're seeing. Making it 39% slower than the 9800X 3D. That 5090 is just crying. Even on a 5800X 3D, this is still a pretty monster CPU. We can turn on frame generation because this bypasses the CPU and just generates more frames in the game. That our latency, for it to feel good, it should be around 50 milliseconds or so. And you see that we're barely getting 50 milliseconds. Now our FPS is very high because we're at like 120 or something. I'd say that the game looks smoother, but it does not feel nearly as tight. I can, I can easily tell this. Man, you're not using your GPU at that point. You're using frame generation. So that means, hey, Let's go ahead and check it out on a little bit even lower tier CPU, the Ryzen 5600. <sighs> Boy, the 5600X is in there right now. And uh, yeah, you can see, yeah, we're getting like, well, sometimes we're getting 100 FPS. I wouldn't say all the time. Obviously, we're being CPU limited at 4K on the 5090. Honestly, this is a very reasonable CPU. Like you wouldn't pair 5090 with this CPU. Obviously it's like $120 CPU, but it's been a great value one for quite a while now. But let's see it. Like maybe we up it to ultra settings. Okay. So this will be ultra settings at native 4k. Do we get CPU limited? We are still CPU limited. So we might have equalized a little bit here. That means that we're limited at every resolution here in cyberpunk. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. It is 51% slower than the 9800X3D, the best CPU that we can get right now. It's like half the FPS, guys. The 5090 is just, oh man, help me. 
If you just want to compare it to the 5800X3D from the previous one, it is 27% slower. This is just a, a major, major difference, even between these two. 5600X, man. Oh, man, it's struggling. Moving on to Marvel Rivals. If you have a 5600X, getting a 5090 to, as your GPU is not going to help you. You can only get like 100 FPS in this game with the CPU. It's wild. Every resolution, it's limited. <laughs> You might as well just play at 4K. There's not really any downsides. It's 49% slower than the 9800X3D in this title. Yeah, if you want to play this game, getting a better CPU is going to be well, well worth it. And the 5090, man, it's, just, it's really just sitting there idle. It's not really doing anything. But let's go ahead. In Stalker 2, this one kind of breaks my heart. Outside of the town, looking out here, we're CPU Luna at 4K high settings native yeah we can only get 70 fps just looking out into the distance there's nothing really that cpu heavy that's going on out there but then we run into the town here it only gets worse guys you see our G deviation is up at like 37 percent our fps drops down into the 40s on a pretty damn decent cpu this is very reasonable and uh, honestly nowadays it's still a pretty fast one now at this time this wasn't the fastest cpu when it came out but it wasn't bad at all and you can see that we're we're in the 50s consistently here you can run out of the town area where there's less npcs around and your cpu limits do ease up a little bit as you can see our percentage will drop down and then our fps will also go back up at every resolution, it averages 53 FPS. We talk about 60 being good, it's just, well, th this CPU just can't do that. Again, very consistent here, 51% slower than the 9800X3D. Like, oh my god, it's crazy. It's crazy how much it takes a hit here. But we can go lower. What about the 3600X? On the 3600X right now, that's something. <laughs> that... Guys, that is something. Dude, we got like a 30% GPU deviation, 28%. Uh, yeah, the GPU kind of waiting right now. That doesn't mean the GPU is only 30% faster. As we saw, the GPU can get up to like 200 FPS or something in this game. This is pretty similar to what's in a PS5 and an Xbox Series X right now. We are stuck at about 80 FPS at every single resolution. It does not matter where we play at the 3600X, just struggles. Making it 62% slower than the 9800X3D. And don't think you'll get away with it at 4K. You're still losing 29% of your performance going to 4K because yes, the GPU is limiting the, the 9800X3D here. 3600X is just actually limiting it still at 4K. It's 29% slower. If this is the CPU you have, this would be the performance of like a 4090 instead of a 5090. Don't get the CPU in this GPU. <laughs> and we're locked in at about 100 FPS on the 3600X in Marvel Rivals at every resolution. You know, just play at 4K max settings in the game because there's no point in not. Making it 56% slower than the 9800X3D. Just wow, just wow. And if you want to compare it to the 5600X, the difference here isn't that dramatic. I mean, you're only losing 13% from the 5600X to the 3600, but at the same time, both of these GPUs look at the GPU busy percentage and it's, yeah, they're holding the 5090 back like crazy. Entering Stalker 2. We're outside the town and uh, we can achieve 60 FPS on the 3600X. You know, barely. So let's go ahead in here and you can see the massive stutter immediately as I started to walk towards here and I can see the choppiness i hope you guys can also see how choppy this feels holy and we can achieve the mid 40s maybe low 40s oh we hit in the 30s for a second there oh 50 fps oh man so we look right here then we can get some decent performance what happens if we go inside does it get worse it's pretty bad so half of this is the 5090's fault uh, being so fast, but their half is just, man, these games are demanding. I will probably be making a pretty in-depth video about how demanding these games are. This can barely get you by. So does it surprise you that it's CPU limited at every resolution? The frame time graphs are going absolutely crazy, which means the game is stuttery as all hell. And we can only achieve like 47, 46 FPS on average. That's not exactly a good look, and it's not a very good gaming experience either. 58% slower than the 9800X3D. That is just 
That's just miserable, guys. It's kind of crazy, but not as crazy as our next one. 1600 is in there. This CPU holds a special place in my heart. I bought this processor back in 2017. It's at like 80 to 90% usage somewhere in there, which is weird from a CPU to be that high of usage in a game. Our <laughs> frame rate on 4K high settings native, native is at like 40 to 50 FPS in Cyberpunk. Wow, it's rough guys. So we can get like 40 FPS and I can feel the game is like, uh, would this be playable? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to play on it, but you, you could play on it if you really wanted to, but I don't want to. 1600 caps us to like 60 FPS at every resolution. Honestly, you might as well just have a lower tier GPU if you have this CPU, which is probably the case anyways, but yeah, why the heck would you pair a 5090 with this? But it's just funny to see it. For reference, that's 70% slower than the 9800X 3D. If I were to pick one, you know, I'd probably pick the one on the left. You know, just a hunch. We also get capped to about 60 FPS in Marvel Rivals. So I don't think you'd be playing that competitively in this game unless you're a really big fan of 60 FPS in a highly competitive game. And oof, 71% slower in the 9800X 3D. I'm just saying the guy on the left with that CPU is probably going to be beating you more than once in this game. If you want to play this in hard mode, you can pick up the 1600, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. So outside of the town, uh, we're looking at a solid and uh, smooth, like almost 40 FPS guys. Wouldn't you love, would you love to play the game like this? It's, how much is this choking the 5090 right now? Apparently we're at like 50% usage. But let's get into the, the little town area and uh see that fps drop off a cliff like look at the stutters to the freaking stutters wow that's insane man we go in here and we're we're barely hitting 30 fps wow that poor 5090 with this cpu we're stuck at about 30 fps at every resolution does not matter <laughs> Oh man, might as well play like 8K at this point and try to get 30 FPS, which actually might be possible with the 5090. And 72% slower than the fastest CPU that's available. I yeah, mean, the 5090, just do not choke this graphics card if you have one. Honestly, I would probably recommend that you need the 9800X3D for the 5090. And the 9800X3D is a $500 CPU. That's not even the motherboard. <laughs> If this doesn't tell you how much CPUs are mattering in games nowadays, like this game, I don't think this is really doing anything that crazy right now. For hitting the CPU this hard, man. Wow. Oh, wait, are we? Oh, we got a crash. Guys, I wonder why we got a crash. So what did we learn today? Well, that your CPU matters quite a bit. This is pretty much just a fun experiment because why would you pair a eight-year-old CPU that was kind of low to mid tier at the time to a 5090 that's two thousand dollars i think it's pretty interesting to even see in some of these games i only really tested three but how cpu demanding they can be nowadays and i will be digging this in, the, in a more in-depth video later on because so many games are requiring so much more than your on your cpu that it almost feels like your gpu doesn't matter as much what nvidia is saying is oh you can use frame generation to bypass the cpu and get higher frame rate but that's not the same thing as real performance. Just keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of these GPUs, their performance may really end up depending and depending on what games you end up playing and um, how fast is your CPU, how fast is that rest of your system, that all can add up quite a bit. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one. Peace.